of Zoom. So anyway, okay, well, um, thank you all for being here and um, attending the Octo Project um, session. I'm Rudy Streif. I've been working with the Octo Project um, almost 10 years uh, from the beginning when the project um, was created as a Linux Foundation project in November, December uh, 2010. Uh, at the time I was working for the Linux Foundation and I've been uh, creating uh, training classes for the Linux Foundation and been teaching the classes uh, a lot. So, and um, eventually I started my own consultancy and um, which is IBTO and I've helped uh, many clients essentially to um, get started with um, Linux um, operating system stacks and embed the system from scratch or porting from other build systems or yeah and porting from other um, other operating systems for that matter. Okay today we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, well user space and a couple of things um, that um, are not that commonly covered uh, I think uh, so a lot of your development work will typically be in um, you know developing your own software packages at the end of the day that is the value add for your product that you're providing so you want to put uh, your your own things on top of it and creating your device or whatever you're developing um, 80 percent of the software is the the common Linux operating system stack, but the 20% that you're developing certainly makes a difference to stay with a typical Pareto analysis here. So, Rudy, your uh, voice is going loud and soft. Okay, uh, maybe that is me talking, but I also try to, uh, let me see if I find my, um, my controls here. That is not good but I'm also all cranked up here. Okay, maybe I'll try to um, stay also consistent in my, um, in what I'm with, with my microphone, but the microphone is all um, cranked up. So is, um, is that better? That is better, it's more consistent. Okay, uh, so we're gonna talk about um, packaging, package installation scripts, and system services if your software packages actually provides a system service and how the Octo project uh, does that. This is going to be a hands-on class. So there is a lab um, setup. And if you're logged into your lab setup, uh, you can go into um, Scratch um, Pokey and source your um, built environment using of course source oriented built env and build user space. And everything is already pre-built in there. So eventually you don't really have to you know, do any configuration uh, things right now. And you don't have to bit bake anything, but you can try it. It should just, you know, come out and say, everything is done already, no tasks to build. Uh, but at a test, you could just um, run your um, Quemu from your terminal and see it if it actually comes up. So you wanna use the no graphic um, option so that uh, your Quemu output, since it's a text-based image anyway. So your QMO output just goes um, straight to your SSH terminal. And I don't know, I mean, we have lots and lots of people on and I don't know how many people actually have access or using the, uh, you know, the SSH, um, or the build environment and the build hosts. Um, but um, yeah, if, if this is working for you or if it's all okay, then um, yeah, maybe some feedback or so in the, uh, in the Slack channel uh, would be great. Otherwise, I'll just uh, essentially continue. All right. So, yeah, maybe I can show this. And now my screen should actually be overlaid here. But um, so if you do um, run Cremu no graphic and Cremwix. Uh, 86, 64, this should actually come come up here. And now I need to remember this user. I'll copy it, let's see if it's, okay, that's pretty good, so. Okay, eventually your, your Cremo emulator should boot like that. Good. Oh, I see that. Um, yeah, somebody has you had a built um, kicked off. Um, Fifty-seven percent um, done. Oh, and kernel not found. Cremo uh, x eighty six sixty four. So uh, 
I don't know if somebody can actually help um, somebody on the uh, staff team or so maybe can help with some troubleshooting tips tips or so. Uh, Eric, maybe you want to uh, post some error messages in there and see if we can uh, track it down in parallel while I, I'm talking in the interest of time too. And um, Keith has kicked off a build that may be kind of a path confusion so that you've got a new build environment, a new path. Okay. Oh, the build is not done in the pre-build environment. Is that correct? Oh, typo is, okay, good. Somebody have it running. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll start um, talking. So um, the next step and eventually, okay, so I'll have to rest here a little bit is you wanna also create a workspace um, for you with a um, dev tool because we're gonna do some actual development with the Yocto project. And this will create a workspace for us and will also create a layer for us and that layer will automatically be added to our build environment. So this is all um, set up. So if you have builds and if you're not just right now building, uh, you want to use um, the dev tool to create workspace to create your workspace layer. And then let's come and well, if you're still building or so, you just want to come back at a later point in time. Rudy, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Um, when you do your source, yeah, when you do your source, use the build okay. dash uh, um, user Eric, space you're in, project. You're in Scratch. Um, Pokey, you shouldn't actually be in Scratch Pokey, you should be in Scratch Pokey and the build user space on directory and you should have sourced that um, prior to that. Um, also, if you had used this environment before, uh, you have maybe your environment variables already set to a different um, build environment or so, in which case you may want to log out and re -log out to get a new shell. Okay. All right, let me know or have all the helpful people on, on the chat if you have any issues with that and see, so you get it everything going. Okay, we got successful tests and excellent, excellent. Thank you for letting me know. And thank you for playing along. That is the most fun here. So let's talk about packaging. So you have seen this before. If you build open source software packages, the typical steps essentially that you have to do to, to build an open source software package in, in most cases, or any software package for that matter. Well, so you have to fetch it from somewhere. So you have to get your sources from somewhere. So it can be in a repository, it can be your own repositories, your company's repositories, or it can be an open source repository somewhere on the internet. Then these software packages come in different formats. And you know that the Yocto Fetcher, open embedded fetchers are capable of downloading pretty much any type of source package. It can be just plain files via, via HTTP, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, like um, part files that are zipped and compressed in many different ways, or can be also from the various um, uh, software type of repositories, um, code management systems such as um, Git or SVN, CVS, and so on. The next step, sometimes you have to apply kind of local integration patches and things like that if the sources are not entirely patched. Essentially, you're applying patches on top of the sources to make it ready, make the sources ready to get built. The next step, if the package build system uses some sort of like configuration steps as it is common with all the tools and CMake. So you have to run that uh, configuration step there. And very often, I mean, of course, that is hidden inside of, sometimes it's hidden inside of the build itself. You know, if you just type make or um, some other script or so, this is done already for you. But typically you wanna have, have to run CMake or you have to run um, configure to configure your sources. Then you go on with building all the build artifacts are created. And if you're deploying a software package for your current host, you're also building on, you would typically often want to install it. So it's gonna be installed um, somewhere in the root file system. Uh, for a build environment, like for a cross build environment, like the Yocto project, you of course wouldn't be installing any packages into the root file system of your build host. That's why the Yocto project sets up all of these um, sandboxes essentially where for every software package specifically, the, um, the installation directories, so there's a local sysroot for, for those installation packages. And after that, 
Well, that is a step that you would typically do if you're you know, deploying what you have built also to other systems. If you're just deploying, of course, to your current build system, there is no point in packaging things. But if you want to distribute a software package, you want to package it up in some sort of a package management system. And that's what we're going to be talking about um, right now. That packaging step, that's the, the Octo project open embedded does for you too. And as a matter of fact, it uses those packages to actually create the root file systems for your target system too. So essentially any root file system is not generated by simply copying uh, build artifacts. It's actually generated from those um, packages, which is different from a build system, maybe like build root or so, who actually copies these artifacts and not uh, doesn't go through a packaging step. Generally speaking, packaging is that process of putting build artifacts from the build output into one or more packages for installation by a package management system. And OK, you can ask, well, why don't I simply copy the build artifacts? Well, there can be many build artifacts that serve different, different purposes. So you want to manage the space on the target system. Maybe you don't need everything. Some software packages have documentation. If you're building an embedded system, the documentation for that particular software package may not be relevant for, for this embedded system. You also want to allow eventually installation removal, removal after the initial root file system has been created also and at runtime. So if your system is, is running, maybe it is deployed, maybe using the package management system to um, um, update or provide um, additional software packages um, to it, like any Linux distribution essentially does it. And um, yeah, so you can also, packaging also allows you to detect and manage installation conflicts. Um, if, a if two packages try to install the same artifacts in the same directory or so, that would be a, a conflict because um, one would override the next and package managers are typically capable of detecting such problems. So um, these can be flagged at, at, um, at build time essentially already and then later at um, packaging time. And sometimes you also need to provide pre and post installation or removal processing in form of some scripts. You have to do something. Maybe you have to locally adjust configuration files or uh, things similar like that. So there's good reasons why you want to do the packaging rather than just um, having a build system copy something into a root file system that later on a bundle up together and put onto your target system. So how does the Yocto project um, do the packaging? There are package management classes that do that for you. And there's three of them for the most commonly used um, package management systems. Um, package RPM, of course, the Red Hat package manager, manager format. Uh, package and package deb, which is the, it should read Debian, not debbing, autocorrect for whatever reason. Uh, packaging format used by um, you know, Debian-based uh, uh, distributions such as Debian itself and Ubuntu. And package IPK, the ITSI package manager that's used by the open um, package uh, management systems, essentially. <laughs> Excuse me. How do you configure what pa uh, package management configuration you want to use or what package manager you want to use? And you said that, well, you can set that in conflocal.conf. Or you could also use it in a commonly it's done there. Could do put it in a distribution file too, because if it's um, if it fits your needs um, better. So you had two package classes. The um, name of the package management class essentially it is the .bb class. However, you provide it, of course, like with any classes, uh, without the .bb class extension. In this variable, you can actually add more than one of the package classes. So you can have these artifacts packaged up using all three of them. However, only the first one in the list will be used to create the um, final root file system. So um, I'm not quite sure what an exact use case would be why you package it differently, maybe for testing purposes or so. Uh, but of course, if you use multiple package classes for packaging, it will also take more time and more disk, disk space, of course, on your system.
using a package uh, management class does not mean that the package manager itself, so let's say for RPM, the RPM command, or for packaging the, uh, for Debian, the apt command will be actually installed onto your root file system. If you want to have the package manager in your root file system, you um, uh, want, want to add it essentially. And for that, there is an image feature available that you add to your extra image features or to image features um, variable called package dash management. Yes, correct, Paul. I mean, um, OPKG, and the G is missing here. I apologize for that. So now, if you, of course, package all the artifacts in one big package, you're not getting the benefits of um, being able to manage um, space on your target system. So that means you want to split up your um, artifacts into different packages what suits your software application the best, um, essentially. And that process is called um, package splitting. So putting the different artifacts into different packages. And it um, allows you, of course, then to control what footprint um, your package, your install software will take um, up on your target system. And <clears throat> will certainly go very well with what um, Kem has talked um, earlier about you know how to how how do I build the tiniest system possible that actually does what I want it uh, to do. So package split, splitting is controlled by two variables um, packages, which is a list of package names, and the default is set to this, and this default is um, pretty good, pretty reasonable, but you can also extend it. So typically, of course, um, you have dollar pn and if you're familiar with the octo project open embedded build system um, dollar pn stands for the package name which is um, typically automatically derived from the name of your recipe file and um, there's a list of packages debug pa packages and um, static dev um, development packages for um, for static uh, for development um, static files static libraries um, pn dev uh, development header, headers and things you would normally uh, require on in an SDK or on a system that can actually development um, itself. Uh, documentation packages, packages for <clears throat> locales, uh, localization, internationalization. And a variable that's inserted here, package before uh, PN, and we talk about this one too, which allows you to actually insert your own uh, packages into that flow of packaging. And the last package in the list is just the um, package name package, and this term package seems to be very overloaded anyways. So which means it's the default uh, package, normally something like, well, I don't know, GCC or something like that, which contains, which is the default package you would install that provides the functionality. Now, the next variable is you have to tell the build system what files go into each of these um, packages and that you do with these um, files underscore dollar pn uh, variables and then with the extension, of course, of the, um, of the particular package. So your files underscore package names actually match we need to match those entries in the packaging variable. And then you can uh, define you know, um, lists of <clears throat> files and directories that you want to actually package up into that particular um, destination package. So if there are files and directory that are installed by your software applications, internal build system, but they are not packaged after this package has been created by the build system, which is the default package, then the build system will issue an error message that is one of the sanity checkers we'll talk about that tells you um, there is something wrong. Uh, you might want to look into that. And it is actually an error message to um, alert you that you uh, want to actually address this and either by uninstalling or not installing these if you don't need them or by packaging those artifacts into the correct package you want them to be in. All right. So the package class is process that packages list from the left to the right. So the $PN debug package will be produced first, and then the, the default package will be produced last. 
Uh, the, the order of this is important because if an artifact has been consumed by a package, it's not, of course, not available for another package. It wouldn't make sense to package an artifact twice into different packages. That would be considered an, an error or a mistake, um, essentially. So, and of course, then the last, um, the, the last package, the default package will consume everything um, that, is, um, that is remaining, uh, which typically in, in any of the standard um, directories where you would normally install software package such as um, slash lib, um, slash user lib, user bin, and these things like that. So sometimes you have the need to create your own package, a non-standard package that is not covered by one of these um, defaults there. So you would want to add that to the packages list variable without entirely overriding it. And of course, you can do this with big bags, bit bake syntax. So you can prepend easily. So you can prepend something before and have a package created and before um, $PN um, debug, or you can easily append something. So you can create a package that's processed after the, uh, the, the default packages uh, is created. However, sometimes maybe you want to actually insert packages um, right before the last um, package, the default package is created. And that's the purpose of that dollar package underscore P before underscore PN. And it, that's what it actually means. It packages that before the default packages. Um, is created. So you can set it locally in your recipe and add any package names to it that you want to have um, processed um, and, be, um, and to create custom packages. I touched on the packaging QIA a little bit. There are um, functions that um, there's actually checkers all, all over the Yorkto project open embedded build system. And the insane class adds these plausibility checkers. And there's some of them they are also um, used for, um, for, package, for the packaging process. If you're interested in where to find those, you can also look into Pokemeta classes insane.bb class and see what, um, what checkers are available. Some checkers produce errors, other checkers uh, produce warnings, but you can also move checkers around between um, errors and warnings by setting these variables and changing them, depending on what, what the needs are. So there are some common packaging mistakes that the checkers actually can catch. Uh, one is uh, packages list. So you have the same package and it's mul listed multiple times in packages, but of course they're in different positions. So that's um, considered an, an, an issue to be warned about that. Uh, one is um, installed versus shipped. That means an artifact has been installed somewhere in the uh, in the local sandbox there, but it has not been packaged into any of those packages. So you want to look into that and adjust the files variable or create another package to make sure that these are um, also packaged. Or if you say, well, I don't need those at all. So you can actually um, deinstall them, remove them from the sandbox. Another one is um, already stripped. So the build system creates, of course, debug packages with um, uh, binaries and symbols um, itself. However, some of some of these software application uh, build systems make files or so may already um, strip the debug um, symbols off um, in, in one of the you know targets or whatever they're doing there. And in that case, um, those um, the binaries wouldn't have any debug symbols anymore. That is also a mistake, essentially. Then you would want to look into the make file or say, OK, so what step actually removes those um, debug symbols, runs the strip command, uh, essentially. Of course, you know, if for production deployment in the default package, you want to have stripped um, binaries. You don't want to have the, depo, uh, the debug symbols. But of course, in your SDKs, or so you want to have the package with the debug symbols so that you can actually use debuggers, such as the GNU debugger. And um, LD flags, that's also common. It's the ELF binary actually has symbols, but it doesn't have GNU hash. So that uh, typically points in some direction that some of the, uh, uh, the uh, flags to the pass through the link are actually incorrect and not um, creating the GNU hash for the binary. All right. So now we have a lab um, essentially, and I have sources um, created for that. And, and those sources you can find in SRC user space lab um, packaging. 
And for this one, we use a simple application that actually builds a static and dynamic libraries to calculate the um, Fibonacci series and an application to test it. So first we simply actually create with some um, dev tool and create a recipe, recipe. And unfortunately the auto correction um, took over here again. Also I think I corrected this five times already. So the dev tool is actually all um, lowercase, shouldn't start with a capital. And um, if you do this, and I'll exercise this kind of, so if I can find my own environment here, where is my, so if you have a built environment and everything um, running, and so, no, oh, now I need to, okay, my, my Cremo is still running. I can shut it down the orderly way, although it doesn't matter. Hopefully I still have my password here copied, yeah. So dev tool add scratch src user space map packaging src Fibonacci. And what this does, and we'll have a lab or a, at least a, have a presentation to uh, later on dev tool, it um, parses, looks at the sources essentially um, and creates a, uh, creates a recipe already in, uh, in our workspace so that um, we are ready to go. So we can actually bit bake this. And um, please, you know, if you're all set up, please follow along. That doesn't take too long. And then um, we edit our local.conf and really, really quickly. start with core image minimal. So we build the image and put our application in there. Uh, to shut down Cremo inside Cremo, just um, type in it space M zero, and then it um, actually goes and it shuts down. Or we can also use some shutdown minus minus H now, and it gets you back and onto the um, onto your build hosts uh, command line. You might have to enter the your password again to remove the uh, ton tap device. All power off. Yes. And then we can actually run our Quemo again. Now our application should be there and then we can have these um, Fibonacci terms uh, being, being calculated. So what this demonstrates, and if you're successful um, following along here is that uh, for a rather simple application or maybe also an application that is well set up already with the make files and has installed targets and everything, there's really nothing much you have to do really nothing you have to do. Uh, your recipe is already set up correctly to package your application and create the, and create this um, particular, yeah, particular uh, package correctly. And um, we can also, yeah, 
Look at that. Of course, if you go into um, temp, I'll build stats, but work. And then, um, where well, is probably this one? Fibonacci uh, on the our version here. So under um, I don't know if that's installed here. Let's see. No, it is. So under image, um, essentially here, that is the staging directory um, for installation of uh, free packaging. And you see all of our artifacts um, in here. So since our little Fibonacci application, of course, produces a binary called Fibonacci and it's installed in user bin. Uh, but of course, there is also a header file that um, would eventually go into a development package, um, Fibonacci.h, and um, we have the um, uh, we we have the the libraries too, the static library, the .a, and the dynamic library, the um, the .so, um, there. And in um, package packages split. So um, you see all the different um, pack packages, how they are actually split up. So here you see already um, in in which different uh, in which different packages the artifacts are um, are split up um, or already. So in packages lib Fibonacci, you'll see of course user user bin and then the Fibonacci only, and then you can go through the debug packages. Will have let me do a tree here on this one. Um, well, we'll have, yeah, we'll have the uh, the, the bins, uh, the bins, and the libraries um, in there with the uh, debug symbols, and we don't have any locales here. That's not a localized um, application. Uh, the source package that's already created has the sources in there, and your development packages. All right. So, what's the, um, yeah, what's the feedback though? So, does this um, work? I guess we have 200 people on <laughs> on on this uh, call Zoom environment. When I'm doing these classes, it's only a couple of people, normally five or six some people, so we have more immediate feedback. So I'm kind of talking out to space, and um, eventually something comes um, back from space through the uh, through the Slack channel. Okay, so there are a couple of not founds and things, and maybe some incorrectly sourced build environments. This is quite, quite typical um, you know, if you're in the wrong directories or you visualize the wrong directories. Um, how does Bitbag know to create the uh, create the Fibonacci under um, the meta user space um, layer? Um, because we've been using DevTool and had to set it up that way. didn't like um, image install append that's plus equals Fibonacci. So you will actually, if you use append, uh, just um, use the equal sign and you want to always want to make a space, put a space in front of uh, in front of what you want to appending because underscore append is appending without spaces. I'll show this again, go back here. Mm. Maybe jumped over this a little bit too quickly here at the end. You see here um, image install append equals and always add the space there. You could use image install plus equals Fibonacci, that would work too. Yes. So far, so good. Following along. All right, uh, let's try the next um, step here. What we now want to do is to edit our recipe Fibonacci BB and place the Fibonacci test application into its own package called $PN 
dash um, test to be created before dollar pn because now we want to split it up and our main package essentially will be that library that we then can use universally use by other applications and maybe more sophisticated Fibonacci applications rather than a simple text thing. And uh, we want to just have the test application uh, package done differently. And then you add it Fibonacci and Fibonacci test um, to your image and you build it. So um, here's what you need to do uh, to, make, to make this happen essentially in your recipe. If you're working along, please um, try it out. Actually, I can show this to you. And test. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to add your files here, and I can never remember that either. Oops. Two little screen real estate as usual. So by setting your files variable, of course, to the for the test package, you want to tell the build system to package your Fibonacci application, which is an user bin, which is represented by dollar bin there, essentially to package that, put that into that package. You can put those um, two lines anywhere inside of your uh, recipe. And your recipe is, if you found it in meta user space recipes Fibonacci, it's called Fibonacci.bb. Maybe I'll carry this over. Now we want to add um, edit local.conf and then also add test to it. And let's bake a little bit. Oops, I'll remove that. You can still see that. Yes, if you, if they, the, the source code is available. Um, if you log in, you can actually pull it down from your um, environment. Um, I don't know, uh, Milan, if you're working with a host that have been set up by Michael Holster, or if you uh, if you just need the source code um, from someone. And if, well, if you don't have a login, then yeah, we'll have to get you the source code somehow differently. And I don't know, David, if you have a have solution for that. I have posted the source code to the uh, download page. Uh, so it's, I just put it up like two minutes ago. I finally figured out help, how to do that. Help? Uh, if you're more specific, then we can help you with that. Good. All right. Unable to start big BitBake server. Parse error. Image install append. Uh, uh, did you copy the quotes or something like that out of um, out of the uh, uh, out of the slides? Because um, that could be could be something. Yeah, the, the, typically it's it's the wrong quotes. So you want to just remove the quotes and um, type them in again. Should work. Yeah, smart quotes. I don't know if it's that smart. It's not smart if you're a developer. It's more like pain quotes.
Okay. So of course, if you're looking there into uh, user lib, you'll see your uh, our lib Fibonacci library again, and um, we should also have your our um, Fibonacci application. Um, if you want to test Fibonacci, you um, you build your image, of course. You run your Quimo emulator. And you just type Fibonacci, and then it asks you for the number of terms, and I should spit out the number of terms. That's all there is to it. Any good? Well, we have about um, 18 minutes left, so a couple of more things to do. Of course, you can always try this at home, too. It's actually st strongly encouraged to try things like that at home. Okay, let's talk a little bit about package installation scripts. And if you want to carry out operations before a package is installed, after a package has been installed, before a package is removed, after a package has been removed. And for that, you create those um, script snippets and you put them into your recipe. And there is um, pkg underscore preinst and then underscore the name of the package. Uh, typically, most commonly, um, $PN, but of course, if you have installation script for any of the other package types, you would use those too, like um, underscore um, $PN dash test or debug or whatever it is. And there's one of these variables for these um, script snippets in terms of um, for pre-installation, for post-installation, for pre-removal, and for post-removal. So these um, scripts, of course, get executed whether you whether the root file system is created by the build system or whether you put a package onto your target system and you have your package manager installed, and then the package manager will re run those um, scripts on your target. Sometimes you want to have a script that you want to defer it um, at runtime or um, at forced boot of your target. That is possible too. And if you are a Yocto project veteran, you know that this uh, syntax has a little bit changed. So this is the newer, uh, new syntax now. The old syntax has been um, deprecated. Uh, there is another special script name, skeleton name essentially for it, pkg underscore post inst on target underscore, and then the name of the package. Um, this means then the execution of the script will be deferred on first boot uh, on the target, and but only on the first boot. So all subsequent boots, of course, it will not be um, executed anymore. The deferred script execution is integrated with the system startup, so it works with system five init as well as with uh, system D. I have a little lab here, and maybe in the interest of time, um, we'll skip that. That's actually pretty simple. So you just add that to your recipe, and then you try it out. And this touch also fell victim to um, autocorrection here again. This one just creates a, a file, an empty file, essentially, in on the TMP file system. And um, on the first boot, you will go in and you can see if the file has been created, which it has been. And then if you boot it again, of course, the TMP file system is um, RAM based. So it will be um, set up again once the system boots again. And that time, the next all consecutive boots, you won't see that file anymore. All right. Some packaging tips here. Of course, all build artifacts need to be properly installed so that build system can actually package them. They have to go into that um, sandbox. Installation can either be done by the make file or any other installation code that the, your package build system uses. You know, you can do that in C make files too, or by the recipe. Now, if you're writing your own software packages, I do recommend that you are actually um, providing the installation as part of the built environment of your software package and not do it in the recipe. The reason for that is logically, of course, it belongs to your software package. And the software package knows best where the artifacts and everything has to go. The build system only has to pick them up um, later to do so. Um, however, you know, sometimes you have to write a recipe for a software package that you get somewhere from upstream and they don't do an installation. You can, of course, 
fix it up, the make files and everything, and try to you know, comment it back. And that could be one of your vendors, or it can be an open source package. Um, or you can provide the tooling in the do install task of the recipe. And so the make file installation, that's a quick example how you could do that. And um, we did that too um, with that um, Fibonacci um, application make file. So we can use these um, variables essentially, and um, these are passed correctly by the build system into your make file. So your make file knows what they are. The desktop, of course, typically in a you know, host installation that doesn't use a sysroot sandbox or so, would be empty, and then it would install it right there into the um, root file system of the host. If you do this in a recipe, you can modify your do install task and um, add to it, or you override it um, completely, essentially, and use the install command. Um, always use the install command, and um, uh, rather than just copying or using um, change mod and things like that, because the install command then is correctly carried out uh, by the build environment. So a couple of convenience variables you can use in this environment so that um, referring essentially to the right um, subdirectories into your sandbox, um, binder, sbinder, libder, and so on. So um, you can easily figure out what those are and how to use those. Okay, well, I'm sorry, Nathan, that um, you find it frustrating. Um, I'm not sure what, uh, what problems you have, but we're certainly um, happy to help you out um, even later. Unfortunately, we only have a limited amount of time to debug. Um, debugging packaging, you know, things can go wrong with the packaging. So you want to look into or find, see what you can do to debug those. You can check the packaging log files, like any log files for any tasks of the built-in system in work there slash um, temp for the particular package. You can check the installation of the artifacts in dollar work slash image. We looked into that um, earlier, so you can see if everything have, has been installed the way how we expected it. Uh, then you can check the package and artifacts and um, work your um, package. You can check up the, if the package splitting worked um, correctly in packages um, dash um, split, so that you can see if this has been this everything. The, the artifacts have gone into the right um, packages. And then finally, you can actually create or look at, in, uh, look at the actual packages created in um, work there, um, deploy package um, manager. All right, a little bit about package architecture. Um, packages are created and packaged by architecture. The, um, the default package also goes into like the generic CPU architecture, like um, core. 2-32 um, or so. That is the default that's automatically set by the build system and it's applicable and typically suitable for any user space um, application. Uh, you can have a machine specific tune for software that is very dependent on specific hardware that are provided by the machine. So typically that would be applicable to kernel and drivers and bootloaders and maybe other things uh, where you directly interact um, with some pieces of hardware that is um, very specific to your particular target system. And then there is an all type architecture that's for, for anything can be shell scripts, managed runtime code, such as Python, Lua, Java, and so on, as well as configuration files. So that is controlled by that package arch uh, variable. Uh, tune, that's a default, the so package arch is set to tune package arch. For the machine, um, you would set it then to machine arch. And if you have something like Python scripts or any raw configuration files, you just inherit the all arch um, class in your recipe, and then it would be packaged accordingly. Of course, the package archi architecture setting package arch does not just um, determine what categories stuff is packaged into, uh, but it also determines the, the compiler flex and linker flex and other build options that are uh, passed through the cross tool chain components. So last but not least, and maybe I talked too much or so, we only have nine minutes left. Let's talk about um, system services. If your software packages a system service, so that needs to be started when the system boots, you need to add the scripts or service files. Two schemes are supported by the build, by, by the Yocto project open embedded system five init. 
Um, what you have to do is you inherit the update dash RC class. You can, and then you set um, the init script packages. That's a list of packages that actually contain those init scripts. Um, so it's a default for that, of course, uh, just the standard package, the default package contain, um, containing the, um, uh, the init scripts, which is um, reasonable and logical. Um, the name of the init script that you have to provide, um, you can name it whatever you want it, typically some script file that name stands in dot init or something. And of course the init script parameters, which are these um, parameters that are passed to update dash rc, it's a typical init script um, string like start 99, three, five, uh, the priorities and the run levels. Um, if you use init, system five init, you're certainly familiar with that. System D is similar, you just inherit the system D class. Uh, system D packages, it's the system D equivalent to init script um, packages for the um, system D service files. And um, then the system D service, which is the name of the service um, file. And these are not mutually ex exclusive. So you can set up a recipe for both. And then the uh, build system will actually choose according to what your um, system manager runtime has been set to. There is a lab for that um, too, but um, I think, um, well, I want to leave a little bit of time maybe for some questions or so. Um, you can walk through this um, too, essentially. Here we're building a, a Fibonacci server. Uh, so TCP server is listening on port 9999. Um, we are creating another um, recipe for this. And um, then we do the system service and start up the recipe. So we're adding this essentially to the recipe. We use both. Um, and um, so this recipe or this would actually work on any, uh, would work for system five in it as well as for um, system D. And um, you build the recipe, of course. Um, we add your Fibonacci server and we're also adding SOCAT there so that we on the target, we can actually interact with the um, with the Fibonacci server so we can actually connect to the socket. And it works pretty much the same like the, um, to the native application. And that's how you would connect to it. And of course you wanna even to know how to change the system manager. The default for the Octo project is um, system five init. That's what it's running right now, but you can actually uh, change that. You can add um, distro features append um, system D. So that means you also wanna use some um, system D and you said virtual runtime init manager system D. So you can switch back and forth um, between um, system D and system five init um, with this configuration. Only one of them is used of course, um, but um, the, the, the root file system has adjusted accordingly to use some um, either one of them. Um, if you exclusively want to get use system D and want to get rid of everything that's related to system five in it from your root file system, then you use some distro underscore features backfill considered system five in it for any packages kind of explicitly referencing um, system five in it so that the build doesn't break. And then virtual runtime init scripts, an empty list so that all init scripts are removed and not um, copied onto the root file system. So, um, yeah, unfortunately I had to speed up a little bit at the end. So it's a little bit more content maybe with the labs or so um, that, um, that take, take a little bit more time. So I apologize if um, some of you found it um, a little bit frustrating or so, if you have some time or so, we can uh, look into that um, offline. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions or so, uh, please let us, yeah, let me know on the chat window there. No, I need to, need to catch up here. So if you have a question, you could go ahead and re-add it so that's at the bottom of the list and very so, visible to Rudy. Uh, Robert, I don't quite understand your question. Recent OE supports init underscore manager variable. Oh, it's the, the new variable. <laughs> uh, Chris, only, only plans on writing a second uh, edition. I suppose you're referring to the book on the Octo project I wrote. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, um, I haven't talked to the um, to publisher yet. Um, yes, I agree. There is it is time for a second edition uh, since it has been it's now a little bit um, outdated. Of course, that always takes a lot of time too. Writing a book is um, a lot of work if you've done it before. Uh, the create workspace for dev tool and I think um, next next uh, next uh, presentation will go into that uh, create workspace creates a workspace um, for um, uh, for, for working um, locally um, create um, layer just creates a layer essentially and it doesn't necessarily yeah. Um, yeah backfill considered uh, means that um, any any recipe, anything that has a dependency on um, system 5 in net and uh, the build would break it. The build system tells it, well, don't worry about it. It's there. Um, we have the um, we have the startup covered. Um, PN test actually does um, in that it actually adds that um, package to the list of packages that's first and then files um, pn test um, adds, uh, it defines the files that go into that um, package um, dollar pn dash test is, is essentially just a string that gets eventually expanded so in this case we had use it for fibonacci so it would expand to fibonacci dash, dash, uh, dash test Oh uh, yeah, the SSH on the server. That's a that's a question. How long this um, persists for? Um, for Michael, I can't answer that. And um, okay, the slide still has an error, so I read it many times. Uh, uh, scratch SSH uses with less lab system service. Yeah, that's what it should be. Thank you, Greg. I've got got um, two more minutes um, left, or I can give two more minutes. Well. The next presentation starts in top of the hour, I think. So I'll say say um, thank you so much um, for participating. That's been a new format. Uh, normally, you know, you stand in front of a room and you can actually you know, look at the faces and the people in the room, and um, it can be a little bit more interactive, um, helping out with um, get, fixing things or so. But um, yeah, feel free to um, to reach out to me anytime. So I'll be, be hanging out here a little bit longer. And then we can take it from there. Thank you so much.